The purpose of this short video is to provide a perspective on the possible effectiveness of offboard decoys against modern and future radar guided missiles. Here's a 30 second summary in four points. The details follow. Point one. There are some pretty simple signal processing methods that could be used by a modern seeker to tell the difference between a present day decoy and a true target and thereby ignore the decoy and home on the target. Three of these are discussed in this video. Point two. One method might involve polarization. Polarization mixture of a target skin echo might be different from the polarization of an active or passive decoy. Point three. Glint refers to angle noise in a tracking radar. Now, physically large targets have it, but decoys don't, so it's a possible discriminator, like a cue, for the seeker that it's looking at a decoy instead of a legitimate target, or a way to tell them two apart. Point four, the seeker's radar pulse may be stretched in time as it's reflected along the length of a large target, like a ship, a surface ship. This stretching will not occur in the same way for a small passive decoy, and this stretching will also be absent if an active decoy acts like a simple repeater that transmits a pulse that it receives uh, you know, back with an uncorrupted shape. In both cases, the range profile of the return signal is a possible cue that the seeker is, uh, that for the seeker that a decoy is present. So here are the details. Decoys come in two flavors, active and passive. Active decoys, decoys transmit signals back to the seeker and passive ones, they just reflect the radar pulses. Now suppose, for the sake of discussion, that an active decoy is really simple. It just repeats a seeker pulse uh, back to the seeker without changing the pulse. In this simple case, there are a few ways the seeker can tell the ship from the decoy. Uh, a few examples are polarization diversity, glint, and the range depth profile of the target as revealed by the pulse. And there are others. So let's take them one at a time. Suppose the seeker can measure the copolar and cross-polar components of an echo signal. In that case, the seeker might be able to, to distinguish between a ship and a decoy. I would expect the echo from a ship to be a noisy mixture of copole and cross-pole, whereas the signal from a decoy would have a steady mixture corresponding to a fixed polarization. Now, glint is the bigger concern. So what's glint? Glint is a property of ship -like tar a ship-like target. In other words, a large metal object that's basically a cluster of multiple reflecting points. Radar engineers discovered right away a peculiar thing when they used an angle tracking radar to look at metal targets that have multiple reflection points. The angle tracking signal is mysteriously noisy. Here's what happens. Each seeker pulse that hits the ship is reflected from multiple points on the superstructure. The radar echoes from all those reflection points combine coherently at the seeker antenna and the combinations of constructive and destructive interference cause the instantaneous aim point of the antenna to be noisy and even to wander momentarily outside the physical bounds of the ship. So they called this glint. A ship is seen by a radar, kind of twinkles, doesn't look like we see it as our eyes. It looks like it's jittering around a bit in angle. They also discovered there is absolutely no way around glint. It is an electromagnetic property of physically distributed targets. It is a fact of life. Glint causes a missile designer's heartburn because a noisy angle signal from the seeker causes noisy guidance signals, and that means a jiggly flight and maybe even bad enough for the missile to miss the ship. Back in the day, the only way to fix this problem was to make the seeker antenna servo loop so sluggish that it can't follow the instantaneous demanded pointing direction. Instead, it sort of points at the average of the glint signal, which is somewhere inside the physical bounds of the ship, and that's good enough for the missile to hit the ship. But this solution causes a side effect, and this is how the missile can tell a ship from a decoy. The antenna position loop is designed to be too sluggish to follow the jittery, you know, instantaneous error voltage caused by echoes from the tiny reflectors, all the tiny reflectors on the ship. And the result is that the seeker's error voltage has noise on it when the antenna is looking at a physically distributed target like a ship. And the bigger the ship and the closer it is, the more noise there is. And now for the bad news, a decoy is a point source, only one reflecting point or one transmitting point. So it has, its signal has no glint, doesn't cause any noise at all on the, on the seeker antenna error voltage. When the seeker tracks a decoy, the servo error voltage is completely flat and there is no noise. So that's definitely not a ship. 
Here is a side-by-side -side comparison of the glint target discriminant as seen by the missile. On the left side, the missile homes on a ship. On the right side, an active decoy. As before, the secret angle error voltage scrolls along the bottom of each animation. This is the voltage that drives the seeker antenna azimuth position during tracking. Now, in both cases, the seeker is initially tracking the ship, so the error signals are both noisy. The decoy becomes active after four seconds, and the noise on the error voltage almost completely disappears, indicating that it is, in fact, a decoy. From the simulations I've done, I don't expect glint as a target discriminant to work at ranges greater than about four or five kilometers, depending on the size of the ship and its orientation. But it's definitely a factor at closer ranges where the guidance information really counts. Now, if the seeker classifies a potential target as a decoy, expect it to follow the same you know, similar-ish behavior as if it detected a chaff cloud. And they expect it to return to the previous heading and reacquire the ship, I mean, like pronto. The third discriminant is the target's range depth profile. Now, as the radar pulse travels down, what does that mean? As the radar pulse travels down the length of the ship, it reflects off different collections of reflectors. You know, and, and for a modern seeker, the pulse might be uh, so short that it's even smaller than the ship. So as the echoes from all the reflectors arrive at the seeker, they will give the pulse a time shape that is determined by where all those reflectors are down the length of the ship. The seeker can process the echo to check if it came from a ship-sized cluster of reflectors. It might even be able to figure out what size the ship it's looking at. It might all, or it might be able to make you know, a pretty good guess at what type of ship it is, even what type of ship it is. Now, a decoy that sends back a flat top pulse will not fool a seeker that's looking for a pulse that's been time stretched and whose amplitude has been corrupted by reflectors all along the length of the length of the ship. Now, this, as I said, this does have a pretty straightforward fix. The, the drift from base jammer could stretch the, the and shape the pulse that it sends back, so the pulse looks like a, uh, it to the seeker like it came from a ship, and, and maybe even a specific kind of ship. What about passive decoys? I have no first-hand knowledge of passive decoys, only I've seen online photos. That said, it's not believable to me that a passive decoy like an inflatable corner reflector can produce a radar echo that will fool a modern seeker into thinking it the decoy is a ship. There are just too many obvious missing pieces. Too narrow an angle, too shallow in range, wrong scintillation spectrum, no glint, and other differences, important differences. To be clear, I'm only talking again about modern and future threats. Without a doubt, passive decoys can fool a Cold War era missile. And then they have. So if time's up for offboard decoys and chaff as far as modern and future missiles are concerned, what about using crosspole to peel the seeker off the ship? To find out about that, here are a couple of videos. And this concludes a perspective on the possible effectiveness of decoys against modern and future radar guided missiles.